What would it be like to live on Mars? Imagine you are on the red planet, part of the first colony on Mars. What would your life look like? What would it feel like? And how did we build there? We seem closer than ever before. NASA wants to land a manned mission in the 2030s. Elon Musk's SpaceX plans to establish their own million person settlement by the 2060s. In 2016, Musk admitted that the first groups of colonizers will not survive. And he's right. The other timelines led MIT to label the first wave of colonization as a suicide mission. But why? Let's delve into why all of these habitats inherently fail as they overlooked a crucial factor human factor. This is my friend Alec. Alec and I set out on a mission, aka an architecture competition, to see if we could build the first human development on Mars that combats the psychological toll of Martian isolation. We actually won the competition and we used ClickUp to organize our design process along with the ideas behind this video. I'll share more about ClickUp later, but first let's talk about Mars. Mars is harsh. Temperatures can plummet to negative 195 degrees Fahrenheit. The planet is forever exposed to cosmic rays and ultraviolet radiation. Dust storms can cover the entire planet for months, so say goodbye to harvesting solar power. One thing is certain, humans do not belong on Mars. So, how do we actually build on Mars? Many proposals suggest using Martian soil, known as regolith. It's ideal to locally source materials. Regolith can be compacted, melted into building blocks, or combined with polymers to create durable materials. 3D printing the regolith has been tested and seen in several proposals like Foster and Partners. Other ideas studied using Martian water ice, for instance, was seen in Mars Ice House proposal. Keep in mind, many of these proposals are really monumental. They can intensify feelings of being trapped. Many have created a very monochromatic, sterile environment. Brutalist architecture for decades has been criticized for the same reasons. Another consideration is adaptability. Proposals should remain flexible enough to allow for expansion. Marsha, an initiative by AI Space Factory, is arguably the most promising proposal for a habitat. The design is vertically oriented and egg-shaped with four levels. It would use rock-derived fiber and bioplastics with 3D printing technology to construct the shells. It does fall short in addressing plans for expansion. Lastly, despite the beauty of the indirect natural light in renderings, it strongly evokes a sense of confinement reminiscent of prison-like conditions. The psychological impacts of living on Mars cannot be underestimated. A study published by the National Center for Biotechnology Information highlighted the after effects of individuals subjected to long-term solitary confinement including depression and even cases of psychosis. There have been a lot of circular plans for these proposals, yet the circular design is really not optimal. Circular plans have a monotonous spatial experience. With uninterrupted views of the entire space, each wall curves back to your line of sight. Constant visibility amplifies feelings of confinement, and with lack of variable areas, you can feel as if there's no escape. Habitat designs need to offer a balance of open and private space as well as varied vistas. Architectural elements can also mimic Earth's diversity, such as varied roomed shape and even heights, all offer spatial varieties. So my partner Alec and I took all of these aspects into consideration when we tried to design a human-centered proposal for living on Mars. We first researched and organized our thoughts in ClickUp and were able to visually identify the pros and cons of each precedent study. The Marception competition called for a self-sustaining living habitat for five researchers. We later cited our proposal. It's located within lava tubes actually near the, I'm gonna mispronounce this, near the Ascreus Mons. Of course, there was a lot of research back behind these gestures, especially coming from Dumo Labs, and it actually became incredibly challenging due to the demanded level of coordination. That's where ClickUp, this video sponsor, played a pivotal role. ClickUp's AI-powered productivity tools enabled us to guide our two-man team and remain on top of our specific divided tasks. ClickUp's flexible workspace allowed us to view and manage our project through various lenses, ensuring that every detail was given due attention. 
Because Alec and I are no longer students, we were on the hunt to find a platform, a different platform that was free to try out and also mitigated app sprawl. So this platform gave us a lot of tools. We were also able to file share. So when you participate in architecture competitions, you have to remain on top of these timelines and stay organized. So we didn't just manage this architecture competition, we orchestrated all of our ideas and it actually gave us a leg up in the competition. You can discover how ClickUp can transform your project management, whether you are trying out an architecture competition yourself or just organizing thoughts for a video or an essay, check the link in the description box to get started. After quick studies and sketches, we liked a design that partially exposed to the Martian landscape, yet butted up against the canyon. This scheme provided protection against the environment while still maintaining views. The volcanic material is able to be excavated by rovers and used to construct structures if required at the cliff face. So essentially, here are the steps we foresaw when constructing this. So first, the crew would mobilize at the northeastern flank. Two pilot holes will be drilled into the surface and expand into circular spaces, large enough for inflatable formwork. Three, once the inflatable was placed, a burlap layer is applied and later layered with regolith and flax fibers over said formwork. The mixture will cure and form a thin walled structure. The base of the former can later be deflated and reused for the next space. Four, to protect researchers from solar radiation, the structure can be thickened. Five, once everything is sealed, more attention is paid to the interiors as needed, with tall and narrow apertures added that allow for views from radiation. Although the formwork fills the entire space, the burlap and regolith mixture is only applied where the spaces breach the canyon walls, leaving deeper walls and ceilings unfinished. This method introduced a visual and tactile contrast, combining raw and finished surfaces. This diversity can help break the monotony of uniformly designed spaces, providing its inhabitants with a more stimulating visual landscape. At a programmatic level, the facility is organized by function. The central largest space houses sleeping and eating within a larger cavern that includes a garden not just aquaponics. A traditional garden with its variety of plants, colors, scents, and textures provides a very multi-sensory experience. This sensory stimulation can contribute to a more pleasant and diverse living environment, combating sensory deprivation that may occur in more sterile, technologically focused habitats. In 1984, a study found that patients recovering from surgery who had views of natural settings experienced shorter post operative stays required fewer pain medications and those with views of a brick wall. The farming area is tall and vertical, which utilizes the pilot hole to accommodate efficient vertical farming and aquaponics, which will produce food with minimal waste. Granted, our proposal is a bit larger than the self-contained pods, but the team really believes that it's the verticality and slight horizontal expansion in these Martian lava tubes that will enable humans to thrive. And as it addresses the human factor. So what's next? Where do we go from here? NASA's Mars program and SpaceX's Starship has already funneled millions of dollars into developing infrastructure to support human life on the red planet. Yet the Martian landscape presents a stark contrast to Earth's vibrant and life-filled environments. The monotony of red dust, the absence of natural flora and fauna, and the constant confinement within tiny habitable domes could potentially make this multi-planetary goal, the biggest trillion dollar global failure. It's a desolate, beautiful planet. The red soil of Mars offers a blank campus, not just for building habitats, but for also building a new society. Beyond the physical shelters of the first Martians, the true challenge lies within creating environments that can support not just human life, but human thriving. What an incredible thought that we were a species that once reached for the stars and found a new home among them. I do wanna thank ClickUp once again for sponsoring the video, Alec for being a wonderful architecture partner in crime. I also want to thank Dumo Labs who had extensive research on inflatable structures and Dami Liu who got us thinking about all of these precedents in her wonderful video. I'll link it down below. If you liked this video, please be sure to watch my video essay on why the Olympics are a total waste.